And now GMA's morning mix. Hot topics this morning. The New York governor scandal gets uglier. Who's really running air traffic control? Carl Rove is speaking out on the Bush presidency. We'll have some Oscar predictions as well. Joining us now, Tina Brown, editor-in-chief of the Daily Beast, yeah. former Republican strategist, or are you a Republican strategist, Nicole Wallace, <laughs> and special guest Tom Hanks. Boy, you're a game today. Well, who didn't show? <laughs> 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 Happy to be here. <laughs> Can't wait to weigh in on these hot topics. We actually wanted the eight-year-old who was directing air traffic <laughs> two weeks ago. Uh, but you know what? She was directing yeah. Sky Blue and she's late. <laughs> she's much she harder school. to book than you this morning. But, but what about it, Tina? I mean, when you first hear it, the kid is doing great, actually, not making any mistakes, um, but it is a little jarring to have well, a child in the air traffic Clearly control. the kid is a lot smarter and more competent than his parents. You know? <laughs> I mean, that's, that's obviously true. Uh, I mean, you know, what was this? I mean, you know, don't take your brains to work day. I can't imagine why anyone would put, uh, you know, American safety in this position. I think that it was clearly something that this guy, he obviously the, the parent was standing right there and nothing was going to happen. I guess what, what amazed me in a way was the calm way the, uh, the, the pilots and everyone were responding to it. Like, it made you wonder, does this happen a lot? Do we, are they used to having this little piping voice on the telephone telling them what's going to be happening at takeoff? It Maybe was, they're used to worse. Yeah. But I don't want the guy to lose his job. No, you don't want anyone to lose their job, and I'm of two minds. You know, on the one hand, I mean, have you flown lately? How much worse can it get? That's true. <laughs> I mean, is the kid going to screw it up? I don't think so. But I, I think it just it just reveals um, maybe why traveling is so bad. You know, the, the people are tired, judgment is impaired, and things like this happen. I mean, he didn't make any mistakes, but it's, it's more likely that perhaps a pilot did, could, you know, perhaps wouldn't have been able to understand a child as clearly, and so I think your brain goes to what could have happened, and it's traveling. So what's the proper punishment? Oh, oh, uh, someone needs to stand in the corner, I guess. <laughs> uh, you know, take their headset away, or, you know, make them wear it on the other side of their heads or something. Like that. <laughs> Sound like smart kids to me, so they were. It does feel a certain affection for the father because we've all done crazy things on behalf of our kids, right? Yeah. Right. Give him a break, I say. Cool Me. dad. Cool <laughs> dad. It's, no one is giving Governor David Patterson uh, a break. Governor of New York, he's getting involved now in a domestic violence scandal with one of his aides, calls up, tries to prevent the woman from testifying according uh, to some reports. Um, and now he may have also taken some free Yankee tickets. Uh oh. Which that's the big <laughs> way. Hey, listen, yeah, who turns down free Yankee tickets? The Mets fans. Uh, you know, if, if you can't get free Yankee tickets, what's the point of being governor in New York? <laughs> How, how, was it, it was, how much did they say it was six thousand dollars worth of Yankee tickets? That's, that's like two seats on the upper deck. You know, this is nothing. Who cares? This is small potatoes. This is not a hot topic. Tom Hanks is. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's David Patterson's James Carville this morning. <laughs> I tell you something right now. <laughs> You don't, you don't get to go to ball games if they're throwing the hot dogs. If they're throwing the hot dogs, maybe I'd be upset. But who cares if he gets to go to the ball game? <laughs> We only have Tom. He can just do all the guests Sorry. every time. I am actually, this is the one topic I'm steamed up about. <laughs> Got me hot. Okay, we'll debate him. <laughs> I mean, what's next? Steroids? It's almost as if we're just throwing everything we can at David Patterson. The message is just, please go away. It's like everyone is just digging in their drawers for something to throw it now at Governor Patterson. I do actually think, though, that he should just go at this point. I, I think that the whole th thing with intervening and with domestic abuse was just really so sleazy. It's, it's out of court. Hard to see how he can survive much longer. Meanwhile, someone who is not going away, Karl Rove. Karl Rove, President Bush's former strategist, coming out with a memoir called What? Courage and Consequence uh, in the next week. And, and Nicole, you, of course, worked with Karl Rove. From what we've seen so far, the big uh, revelation, I guess, in the book. In a chapter titled Bush Was Right on Iraq, Karl Rove takes the blame for not fighting back hard enough against those who said mm -hmm. the president was lying about weapons of mass destruction. It's an interesting mistake to pull out and highlight. And I, I actually found, you know, Bush was asked to cite some of his regrets and mistakes. And I, and I think Bush maybe did a better job pointing to his mistakes. He pointed to real specific tactical errors of pushing for Social Security in 2005 after he was reelected. That was a colossal legislative failure. It's also a pretty consequential time in, in Iraq. So, I, you know, I haven't seen the book. And, and I think it's important to remember that, that Karl Rove, you know, while always a lightning rod, has nurtured a very large and very vast base of support around this country through his appearances on Fox News. He travels the country. He's a grueling traveling 
schedule. He travels like a presidential candidate. He's on the radio, and, and I think we should all expect for this book to be a big commercial success. I wonder, Tina, if you know his timing might be right. Had this book come out last year, the, the height of Obama mania, probably no one would want to read about President Bush's presidency at all, yet there is a moment out there now we're the well, Tea Party's Well, certainly, uh, it's, it's a better moment for him than it would, would have been a year and a half ago. But I have to say that it's also not a great moment for him in the sense that his candidate for governor, uh, Kay, uh, Kay Bailey Hutchinson, just got trounced. And there's a, certain, there's a real sense that uh, a Rove's uh, mystique uh, is, a, is a thing of the past. I think, uh, as, as Nicole said, he's, all, he's done too much. He's become such a political hack at this point that I don't think he has any mystique left at all. Uh, but, you know, I, I also think that this whole thing about saying, uh, you know, I, I, it, choosing a mistake that is kind of a minor issue in a way and making this the big thing that he got wrong is one of those giving yourself a pass. No, but the mistake that. here was he was saying I wasn't rove-like enough. Exactly I right. He was saying I wasn't rove-like enough. enough. I mean, I think there's way bigger things that you can accuse Karl Rove about, like completely sort of politicizing the entire sort of presidency in terms of always, always taking the political expedient thing as opposed to actually uh, you know, considering the larger issues. You ready to read about this? I can't wait to buy Karl Rove's book when it's discounted in the discount. <laughs> <laughs> he has a right to write a book. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, uh, it'll be interesting to a degree. I'm sure he's going to just blow the lid off of everything and tell the complete truth about those. <laughs> I, I, I want Cheney's book. I want uh, Cheney's book. That's the one I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking for Cheney's book. I think that's going to be absolutely riveting. Yeah, well, he's been out there previewing it all the time. We've only got about 20 seconds left. Quickly, Tom can't give his predictions. Big Oscar predictions. I'm a big fan of The Hurt Locker. I thought it was incredible. I think a woman made the best war movie about Iraq and Afghanistan that I've seen since those two. So that's for best picture and best director? Mm -hmm. Like to see her get it, yes. Uh, you know, shooting that movie in 114 degree heat, not having it freighted with political correctness, just a tense drama. I think she she should have it. No, we Why don't. can't you make a prediction? Well, I'm a, I'm a member of the knows? Board of Governors. The only oh. thing I can predict is fist fights. Fist fights. <laughs> I think Steve and Alec are only not going to be able to hold it together, and the only good news about it will be a 45 minute show. And we'll be right back. <laughs>